subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I have a little question for you all today. What do you do if you want to take and play a little Hornet Leader over here, and you have a little Down in Flames over here, but you want to mix in just a little bit of World War II right here in the center? What do you want to do if you got all that and you want to mix it together? Well, in that case, you're going to end up with Corsair Leader, newest game released by DVG. And this thing is a massive beast. I mean, it has just massive amounts of games in it. Counters, cards, uh, display maps, everything you can want. Even bits of history, uh, the little patches in the game, everything. Uh, it, it is just awesome. The box itself is massively heavy. This is just the uh, the front cover. I can't lift the box with everything in it. I need uh, a forklift to pick up all the gaming goodness that is in this box itself. So we're gonna take and start doing our review through now and I'm gonna set up a little bit of a starter scenario here for you guys and we're gonna play through it and then we're gonna go over just a few more of the uh, extras that this game has to offer. Let's take a look. Okay, I got a set up here with basic scenario. I actually grabbed the Luzon 1945 US Marines introductory scenario and we're going to take and play through that a little bit and then let you guys just see how the game is played out. Uh, but before we uh, do that, I want to take and show you some of the other components that take and come with this game. And I got to say, sometimes I'm, I'm going to come across like a DVG fanboy and I get it and, and that's because I am. They put out excellent quality games, great merchandise. And I've said it before about them, and I'll say it again. They learn. They pay attention to what they've done before. Work blah, blah 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 shit. What worked well, what didn't, and then they take and improve upon that with each iteration of each game that they take and release. One of the things that everybody likes: the sequence of play, simplistic, right here, always on the board. Once you have the basics of the game. Psh, you're just looking here and you're following it down the list and it helps keep you on track. Uh, the component quality is excellent. They've always taken and uh, excelled in that part. Uh, one of the things I will say as far as the components is the cards have just a little bit thinner or maybe they don't have the, the coating that I'm used to on that. And I think part of that has to come down to the sheer volume of cards that are in this game. So I'm not going to give them hell on that because... I mean, take a look at this. This is the cards after I've sorted them. And yeah, right over here, here's a pack of cards I haven't even opened yet. This is the uh, Aces expansion pack that comes with the game. Haven't even opened that yet. I've got some more target cards here. And these are all pilot cards for all the different planes that you guys can fly. And you can see how thick this is, how just, I mean, hundreds of cards. I know it's something like 300 plus uh, cards come with this game. So not just the stuff that I have laid out here with target and event and then the planes that I've selected, but this whole massive stack here. And it doesn't just end there uh, with the cards. It's with the counters as well. Let me grab the uh, counter tray and show you guys. This is some of the ones that I've gone ahead and sorted. Uh, munitions and gung-ho markers and stress markers and some special units and then all the individual aircraft that you can select I've put in here, hit markers, situational awareness, damage, uh, all that type stuff, okay? But that's not even including, and you see that tray is full, the bandit and sight markers. And this cup here is just full of all the ones that I'm using for this scenario. There are three other bags full of counters here. All right, see, we've got 42, 43, and 44, uh, the years for the counters, and then 45 is what I have in the bowl ready to go. And that's what I also love about this is that they've included the fact that there were different aircraft and uh, infantry units and uh, AA counters and all that stuff, your sights, throughout the war. Technology increased and improved and all that stuff, not to mention the pilot skills are represented as well because the bandits have, let me see if I can grab one here and show you guys real quick. The bandits actually have a skill more or a skill number on them. That top right number there says plus zero. All right, so that's giving the, the bandit a pilot skill. 
that is represented, I think, pretty well in this game, whether it's a minus one, minus two, zero, plus one, plus two. You know, pluses are better for the, the bandits, minus, you know, better for you. That it appears to be the earlier Japanese bandit fighters have a higher pilot skill than the later ones, which is accurate to what happened in real life, that the Japanese had a whole lot of trained and skilled pilots who did really well at the beginning of the war, but they ended up losing a whole lot of them as the war progressed. And then towards the end of it, when they had kamikaze fighters and they were trying to fight to stave off the American push into Japan waters, or Japanese waters, they didn't have the level of pilots left that they had started with. And that's when you ended up with stuff like uh, the Marianas Turkey Shoot. Uh, you guys will probably hear me talking a little history when we're going over this game because this involves my favorite uh, period of history, my favorite uh, theater of operations. I love the Pacific, of course, because it's Marines. It's just chock full of just gung-ho, oorah, hardcore Marine shit, and I just love the hell out of that, and they put it into a game. So, I mean, there, there's nothing not to love about that. So, you've got a buttload of counters. You've got differing counters, enemy counters, for depending on what year that you're fighting. So again, 45, we've got 1945 bandit counters in our cup ready to go. And then you even also have counters, another set of specific counters for naval operations. So if you get into a naval uh, battle, which of course this is specific, there's a lot of that, there are specific counters to represent that which you can take and expand your game even further by conducting carrier operations or island operations, which is exactly what we were doing during that period of time. You know, like the USS Enterprise and the Hornet and uh, the other aircraft carriers we had. This gives you rules on how to take and conduct your campaign from an air uh, blah, 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 aircraft carrier. How freaking awesome is that? You can take and conduct it from island operations, like when they had the uh, uh, Guadalcanal, the air base there, Henderson Field, when the Marines and the Wildcats and the Navy uh, officers were taken and flying off the field and fighting off the Japanese uh, down in, I want to say it's Solomon Islands, if I remember correctly. You can take and simulate that in this game. That is freaking awesome. And one other little tidbit on it is I actually get to claim credit for this idea they were asking for uh ideas for a last stretch goal and i uh suggested the uh final countdown movie adding that in so you can simulate having a modern day aircraft carrier with jets and missiles and bombs and all the cool stuff that comes with it fighting off to say pearl harbor and that's in the game so that uh that's there you've got some uh modern day jets f-14s and uh all the other good stuff with aim missiles and uh, the cool bombs and stuff. And this is pretty much directly from Hornet Leader. You know, I know they reprinted Hornet Leader uh, when they did Corsair Leader. So that was an excellent choice on their part. They, they were already getting the counters printed. You know, they were already getting these components. So it's not like they had to go too much farther. And it just brings this game to just that much of a higher level. So that's just another freaking awesome thing. I haven't punched these counters out yet. I'm probably gonna have to put them in something else. Plus, there were a buttload of campaigns that come with the game itself. So we've got one here, another two, three, four. You guys can see it's just a stack of campaigns. And not only are there the campaigns, but you have the ability to do some linked campaigns, which, I'm sorry, I keep bumping the, the camera there, tripod's a little bit in the way. So you can take and link these. There's rules for linking your campaigns together and uh, playing them out. Uh, we'll go over the specifics on what all this means here in just a sec when we cover that. And there's even a special campaign, the Black Sheep Squadron, that you can take and play as. And the game was included with a patch from the Black Sheep Squadron, which is just awesome. Gippy's gal love that. She's going to take and actually uh, sew that onto something. She hasn't decided what yet, but she wants to take and sew that on uh, so she can take and have it and show it off. Plus the historical stuff that was included into the game, the history of the bottom uh, 
Bomber Fighting Squadron 10, and then, you know, the dates, and they have all this typed out. And I do believe this is a um, customer who took, who had a relative who fought here. I'm not entirely sure on the specifics of it, but from what I understand, someone whose uh, relative did fight in this time period, took and had, you know, the pictures and the journals and all that stuff from then, and DVG was kind enough to type all that up and include it with the game itself. And see, this stuff, this is going above and beyond. Yeah, the game is, is great in and of itself, but most of us who are into these uh, historical war games are history buffs anyway who enjoy reading and learning about this stuff. So including this is just like a little frosting on the already piece of awesome cake that we're getting to devour in course earlier. So that's just awesome. Plus, we've got our dogfight um, player aid here. We'll explain how this is going to work. This is the part where we're getting uh, down in flames rules coming into it because they've got the maneuvers and all that. Uh, we'll cover that when we get into the actual dogfighting here in a little bit. But they were nice enough to mount this. I love it when that's mounted. So this is mounted. Our tactical, uh, tactical display is mounted as well. And we've got a buttload of player aids that can help you with the game. So pretty much once you read the rule book, you're done. This is what I'm talking about, about DVG learning from their previous games and incorporating that on to their new stuff. They've got player aids that are simplistic, give you <clears throat> the information that you need without any extra fluff, uh, player help, linked campaigns on how you're gonna do that, all your pilot skills, just a short little gist of what they mean. And then I like this, key terms, wham. Anything you need to look up. Like I was looking up, um, ah, crap, I can't remember what I was looking up uh, earlier when I was playing a little test game, but instead of having to dig into the rule book, bam, just, oh, I think it was scramble. Uh, as soon as you draw one of these target cards, you stop and you go after it, you know, and uh, handle your business. So that is outstanding. And of course, one of the last things, you do have a player log. Uh, you will need to take and copy this and print out your own to take and write on. Or you can take and download the file itself and print it off from BGG or uh, DVG site. That's the, the one thing is they don't include a whole lot of these. But the box couldn't have fit it. Literally the box when I got it, it couldn't fit everything that came with it. Some of the stuff was uh, outside of it. Like the history couldn't fit inside of uh, Corsair Leader because it was so just packed full. The DVG games generally come with that uh, cardboard divider there in the bottom that holds the cards. That thing was almost flat to the base with all the cards that were in it just so they could get everything into the box. Literally, I'm telling you guys, this game is packed to the brim with awesome goodness. If you like anything about the Pacific Theater, if you like anything about solitaire war games, this is up your alley. Absolutely get it, 100%. But let's take and stop listening to me ramble and go over the game and let you guys see a little bit how, it, uh, how it's going to play. Okay, so we take and look here. This is Luzon, 1945 U.S. Marines. Uh, like I said, and this is an introductory mission. Uh, I picked this one just because it'll be easier for me to show you guys the aspects of the game that you see how it's all going to work out. With it being 1945, this would be the introductory one because the Japanese are going to be weaker and the American forces are going to be stronger. Your available aircraft are going to be listed down here on the left and then also on the left if you lose pilots and you get a replacement pilot that's also going to be listed down uh, what skill level they're going to uh, come with. Actually where is that player help sheet? I can show you guys this while we're at. When you are picking your available aircraft, depending on the length of the campaign that you choose, is going to tell you how many of what skill base that you get. So say you pick a short campaign, you're going to get one newbie, two green, four average, and one skilled. Medium will be one, two, five, one, and one, and then long, and so on. This is what I'm talking about. In some previous DVG games, some of this information wasn't on helpful player help sheets just like this where you can look it up very easily. I love this. This is an excellent uh, addition to it. So, 
uh, these are the specific aircraft that you can get. And just like Hornet Leader, there's a base aircraft, okay? So that base aircraft is like what you would consider your zero points. If you select that aircraft, you're not gaining any, you're not losing any. Uh, for this one, of course, that's going to be your Corsair. So if you select the Corsair aircraft, you're not gaining or losing SO points, which you can use to take and purchase um, munitions and upgraded planes and um, you know things along that nature. It just depends. Some of the earlier uh, campaigns, like your 1942, 1943, you're going to have planes like the Buffalo or the F4F Wildcat, which you'll get so many points like the wildcat i think it's two or three points per um per plane that you choose if it's like a short campaign then if it's a medium campaign you might get three or four if it's a long campaign you might get four or five it just depends so it's all adjusted per length of your campaign so that's an excellent addition uh up here in the top right you're going to see the bandits that you're going to be facing off against which will have differing skill levels and then just like your previous um leader type games you're going to have different bands that you're operating in and you'll see your different target areas and these numbers are going to create your target deck so they're all numbered like we see 43 here when i just flip it over 43 is one of our targets where is it on here okay here we go 43 so in all of these numbers you're going to take and draw together you're going to shuffle them into a single deck and that's going to become your target deck that you're going to draw from and you have different stress bands so operating here it's closer to where you're starting off so your pilots are not going to incur any stress but as they fly farther and farther away from their home base you're going to incur more and more stress so you'll just take and add one or two and then compare that to their cool level but we'll get into that a little bit later also right here on the bottom right of the map you see special weapons there's not near as many munitions in this game as there are in hornet leader obviously pretty much they were just dropping heavy bombs and fire from the sky and raining 50 cow bullets like just pockets awesome ah, love it so you're not going to have a whole lot of special weapons special weapons in this are napalm awesome tt rockets which stranger i've never heard about tiny tim rockets so you guys put down in the comments tell me about tiny, tiny tims because i don't look those up and of course just your basic rockets which corsairs did shoot off so cool stuff it'll either tell you yes or no on whether you can take those and of course you'll take and spend so points on uh here's just a little blurb about uh the history of it any special rules like this one is end in sight lose one victory point for each aircraft that is destroyed because the war is almost over you don't want to die right there at the end of the war that kind of sucked and like i was mentioning earlier down here it says about your campaigns and short medium or long and that's what you're going to choose from and then the score that you need to get to get whatever level between dismal and great and how many so points and how many days the campaign is going to last so let's say for this campaign for luzon 1945 i'm going to pick a short campaign which means i've got three days of combat to go through and i get 20 so points now i'll gain and lose a few so points along the way also just like in hornet leader we have our recon and intel markers down here at the bottom and you see how they have a arrow kind of pointing to the right it's telling you to look at the number to the right and that's going to tell you uh, the effect that you have you want to pop these as far over to the right as possible and destroying targets is the way to do that destroying targets will either grant you more recon or more intel intel is great because it reduces enemy presence so as you move these over so where it's at right now for recon it says two which means when I go to draw my target cards, I'm going to draw two cards and I'm going to pick from those for my day's mission. And as this moves farther on, let's say it's down here far towards the right, I could draw four cards and then pick from them. So we've got more reconnaissance, we've got more intelligence, we know what the, uh, the enemy's up to. Same thing with your intel. These early ones are no change, so it's not going to affect uh, your... Uh, battles but as you move farther on okay now we're subtracting one site 
and now we get farther on we're subtracting a site and a bandit and if you get all the way to the end you're subtracting two sites and three bandits from every one of your battles on there which will really help you out so it pays uh, in dividends to take and get recon and intel as high as possible whenever you can okay so after you've taken and you've selected through what campaign you want to do uh, the length of the campaign you're going to take and need to get yourself some aircraft uh, like i showed you in your player help sheet depending on the length of your campaign is going to determine what skill level those pilots are going to be at so if it's this short campaign i could have one skilled four average two green and one newbie point so i went ahead and selected out a handful of them i've got them laid out here to the left and we're going to take a look at the card real quick and see what information this takes and tells us about the uh, aircraft that we're picking obviously in the top left of the card it's going to take and give you the name of whoever it, ever, whoever it is top right is going to be their skill level this is one of my average ones on the back side is skilled uh, there's three cards per pilot all the way from newbie up to veteran or ace whichever one it is so this is one of mine left side of the card is going to give you your the name of your aircraft and you see here it says corsair now directly beneath that so right here on the left side of the card would be any so points so if the uh, plane costs more so points or gives you so points it'll let you know right there also to the right side of this card you'll see a set of dates and you need to make sure that the aircraft that you select match uh, the dates of the campaign that you're picking. So I could use this aircraft from 43 to 45, but I couldn't use it in a 42 campaign. Uh, left here, right here in the middle where it says C, that's your cool rating, okay? And that's gonna tell you uh, how much stress that comes off the pilot once he finishes a campaign. You wanna have a high cool rating if possible. Uh, situational awareness allows the pilot to take an effect when he's attacking an order, whether it's fast or slow. Uh, the one directly to the right of that where it says GH, that's gung-ho. That is actually something new in this one. It's um, kind of like a get-out-of-jail-free card. I'll go over a lot more specifics of gung-ho when we actually get into the, uh, the battles itself, but it does a whole lot of cool stuff. And then finally to the right of that, we see where it says two, that's your weight points. That's how much it can carry. So we can actually put a few uh, munitions, some bombs on this uh, plane and uh, try to blow us up some uh, Japanese guys. Just like uh, any of your other leader games, down here at the bottom, you're gonna have your stress level for your pilots and it's gonna give you either an okay status or a shaken status. Okay status, of course, you're gonna have better stats. Zero to four stress, he's okay, he's still slow, which means he's attacking after the enemy, but he has positive or zero modifiers for his anti-air or air-to-air, -air, and then air-to-ground. That's what your ATA and ATG stands for over here. If you get shaken, take anywhere between five to eight stress, it's going to reduce your stats, and then of course, if you get past eight stress, your pilot's gonna be unfit, not able to uh, perform in combat. Down at the bottom, it's gonna list down the munitions that the plane can carry. You can see carry 250, 500 pound bombs, rockets, napalms, and drop tanks. Drop tanks are interesting because they can actually reduce the stress that your plane, uh, your pilot goes through. So that's awesome. Kind of give you ever, uh, extra fuel. Actually, there's a neat uh, uh, set of videos that I watched. Uh, the, uh, what is it called? Enterpo Enterprise 360, I think it was. It was on the History Channel. And it shows the USS Enterprise fighting in World War II and how some of the planes, when they would go out on the missions, they would push it to the end just so they could hit the enemy ship. But they would get back and run out of fuel before they got back to their aircraft carrier. So, of course, having a drop tank, a little bit extra fuel, you know, reduce the stress level on those guys. Uh, down at the very bottom, guns. Guns are going to play a massive part in this game because guns were... Uh, primarily used they didn't have missiles back in world war ii so your gun stat is a big one to worry about that can be used in air to air and and uh air to ground actually guns i think are the only thing you can use in air to air unless you're uh playing the the futuristic modified game using 
final countdown rules. So that's the stats on your card, and you'll take and pick out those planes just varying according to what campaign length that you get or campaign length that you choose. Now, after we have done all of that, we've picked out our stuff, and I've got some munitions already laid on these guys that uh, I want to try to use later, but you don't have to pick that out until you're getting ready to attack your target. Now we get into our pre-flight and target bound and all this uh, good stuff here. This is where we're going to take and actually start drawing our cards, uh, selecting our targets, uh, placing sights onto the board, and doing all that good stuff. So, whoop, and I'm just knocking counters all around. I'm going to slide this off the board because we don't need this right now. We're getting ready to get into some actual combat. Now, as you remember from our little campaign sheet, it says we can draw two cards. So we're gonna draw two target cards, see what they are, and we'll pick in between them. If either one of the cards says um, scramble, that means we gotta stop drawing cards and we gotta go after that target immediately. But you do draw the cards one at a time. So let's take and draw our top one here. And we have a truck convoy. This is, this is a small one. It has secondary though, which means that if the next one that we draw uh, is a different one that we want to go after, we can actually take and go after both and get more points that way. So that's a good thing. And it moves our intel to the right, so that's awesome. Uh, small, soft, most, uh, most stuff is soft in this game. Uh, overkill, gain, uh, one victory point. See all the little stats there at the bottom of the card? That's what I like about the player aid sheets is that you don't have to worry about looking up any of that stuff in the rule book. You've got player aid uh, sheet that'll tell you everything. Now on these cards, the top right number is gonna be your target number. We already went over that uh, from your map. This number in the center with the target symbol, that's the amount of hits you need to do equal to or above to destroy this uh, uh, target. The number here to the left though, that's a key one to pay attention to. That's how many aircraft you can take on this uh, on this uh, mission. So we can see that this is a small mission and the fact that we can only take two aircraft on it. Now here on the left, it's gonna tell us how many enemy targets, or not targets, how many enemy sites and bandits we're gonna have at the target area. Our approach is this area around the target site itself. So we can see uh, for the approach, we're gonna have one site in each one of these. So each four spaces around the target. And then for the target, we're also gonna have a site and a bandit, okay? So we only are gonna have one aircraft to worry about if we choose, or enemy aircraft to worry about if we choose this mission. So that's not too bad. And then over here, uh, like I said, that's your victory points and if recon or intel are gonna get moved. Also, one other thing to look for here is if it says gung-ho at the bottom, because if you destroy a target that says gung-ho, you can recharge gung-ho uses that your aircraft take and use while they're on the missions. And of course, our uh, special conditions here at the bottom. So that's our first one. It doesn't say scramble, so we keep drawing. Our second one is also secondary, so it's a small dogfight. Okay, well actually, we'll probably do both of these. Um, this one being a secondary, we can take and do this truck as our primary since it's got some sights on it. And then we can do this one as well because it's just attacking a couple of uh, enemy planes, two zeros. And it actually reduces a stress force as well. A cheap little uh, victory point to get. Uh, you'll see here the target number is zero. There's just a little dash, not zero, but there's a dash there. And that's because you're not hitting the target. The mission, the objective, is to take out the two enemy planes. So it's not uh, not that big of a deal. Also a two plane mission. So we'll have to pick a couple of planes for this mission and then a couple of planes for this mission. And we'll take and do that. I'll tell you what, uh, let me take and grab a couple of my aircraft. I'll take and set them here and we'll go ahead and get ourselves um, sights set onto the board and we'll get ready to conduct this mission. All right, let's take a look here and see what we got. I went ahead and took and placed my target here and determined and placed the sights. You'll notice I have not placed the bandit yet. That's gonna be placed like once your aircraft get there. So the sights are already out and then 
whatever bandits are uh, going to be involved in the fight get placed last after you've uh, placed your uh, aircraft down. I picked a couple of pilots. I got Gallery here and Rodriguez, both a couple of um, Corsairs. And I've got one kind of going in a air-to-air -air role and one going in a bomber role. My guy Rodriguez here is my highest skilled guy. I got him as my flight leader and he's got a plus three to air to ground combat. So I put a bunch of, no, I didn't put that. It was, yep, yeah, counters on the other side. I put a bunch of 250 pound bombs on him since this is a soft target, but it's also small. So there's a penalty for me uh, potentially hitting it. But these 250 pound bombs actually have a bonus against uh, small targets. You'll see that right there on the counter where it says S plus one. So that's a good thing. But combined with his pilot skill, it actually makes it to where I stand a better chance to do more damage with four smaller bombs than two bigger bombs. So I decided to go that route. I can still shoot up the convoy if I have to, to try to take him out. And I have one going for uh, sites and enemy planes and uh, things of that nature. So those are my two pilots that are assigned. I've got them armed. And then we're gonna take and draw ourselves an event card and get started on this. And I'll tell you what, just for ease to make sure I take and don't miss it when we uh, get started on this, because I'm gonna pause it here and get ready to uh, break the video up because we're getting kind of long in the tooth at this point. And we'll pick up part two with the attack on the truck convoy. I'm gonna take and go ahead and draw a random bandit counter a little out of order just so i've got it on the map and ready for the campaign no not site okay we got ourselves a zero here ready to go i'm gonna go ahead and place it here in the target site and now we are ready to go for our mission so we will take and pick up uh with part two of the review through with our, our attack run on the truck convoy and I'll show you guys how attacks work. And uh, the big thing for this is really gonna come down to the dogfight. Cause in previous games, previous leader games, uh, there wasn't as much going on. You rolled to see if you hit, if you hit, yay, you destroyed the target. And you know, if they hit you, they destroyed you or they stressed you out. But now on this, there's actual maneuvering going on. You know, and it's obviously simulated on the board. There's no like hexes you're moving around, but there's actual maneuver and, and thought process behind like, okay, what choice do I want to take? What could be better for me to dogfight this enemy aircraft? So I'll show you guys how that works. It, it's real neat. It's a little uh, not confusing. If you played uh, Down in Flames, this is going to be like right up your alley. Um, but yeah, real intuitive system, real cool. I'll show that to you guys when we pick up with part two of the review through of Corsair Leader by DVG. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.